Hello my friends and business partners from around the world, welcome to my channel. My name is Rafael, I'm an electrical engineer, book writer, business English coach, professional translator and bilingual teacher of mathematics and physics here in Brazil. And on this video, I'm gonna talk to you guys about the importance of transformers in electrical power systems. In the last decades of the 19th century, power systems operated with low voltage direct currents, which meant that the generating plants needed to be constructed near city centers. It was only after the change of paradigm from DC currents to alternating currents that uh, generating plants could be constructed away from city centers even hundreds of miles away from city centers and cover thus a larger area. And with the use of transformers, the power losses in transmission lines were greatly diminished. The objective of this exercise is to demonstrate with you the power that we can save through the use of transformers. We are going to see in this example here that I brought to you that the power lost in transmission without the use of transformer is a thousand times greater than the power lost in cables when we use transformers. First of all, to give you a gist of what we are going to do, we are going to use first a system without transformers and calculate the power lost in the transmission line. Uh, to do this, I want to supply power to this customer. That is a factory and the power that the factory consumes is 100 kilowatts, 0.92 lag in power factor and the client requires its voltage to be 480 volts. So, the power utility has to provide power to this customer at the value that was contra uh, contracted by the customer. <coughs> okay? If, if it is otherwise, if the utility doesn't service this customer with uh, the required and contracted values, the customer can complain and sue the utility, alright? So we are going to calculate the power that is lost here in the transmission line or distribution line if you prefer and the amount of power that needs to be generated to supply power to this consumer, okay? So, I already did this calculus here in my notebook and I don't wish to lose the time with my calculator here. I'm going to provide to you only the final values. Here, here what we need to calculate first to understand the amount of power that's going to be lost here in this transmission line is this, okay? We have the complex power the complex power that is consumed by the load. The complex power can be calculated with this formula. It's going to be the voltage at the load times the conjugate, the complex conjugate of the current that enters that consumer unit. Okay? And this is going to be equal to S load, okay? This is the apparent power, this is the complex power. What is the difference? The difference is this dot on top here. This is a complex number and this is the magnitude of this complex number here. And we have a phase here. So how do we calculate this magnitude here? We simply divide this number by this number, okay? S, the apparent power at the load is going to be equal to 100 kilowatts divided by the power factor, alright? 
Are you guys understanding what I'm doing? And this is the way we calculate. And the angle here, the angle is going to be equal to the inverse cosine of the power factor. The angle of the load is going to be equal to the inverse cosine of the power factor. And then we arrive at the value that we wish. The value that we wish I already calculated, as I told you. I already calculated it and I found the value here that I wrote in my notebook. The power that's going to be consumed by the load is going to be equal to 108,695 phase 23.07 degrees volt ampere. And I want you guys to try it out there for yourselves and check with me if my calculus is right, okay? If I have calculated it all right, then you can tell me. Then, with this, with this value here, we can simply find that the current, the inverse conjugate of the current is the complex power consumed by the load divided by the voltage phasor, okay? But we don't want the conjugate, we want the actual current that flows through the circuit. What we need to do is to reverse the angle. We're going to find here a current, okay? This is going to be a current with an angle theta. The current that we want is has the same magnitude, but the angle is going to be the negative of the angle that we found. All right, my friend, so the value, I already found it here, I already calculated. I told you that I don't want to lose time uh, calculating with my calculator, so the current that's going to flow through this circuit is 226.45 phase negative 23.07 degrees amperes. Amperes, okay. Amperes, current amperes. Okay, so we already know the magnitude of the current that's going to flow through the transmission line. What we need to do now is to calculate the power that's going to be lost in transmission. The power that's going to be lost in transmission can be easily calculated using this expression here, okay? The complex power line that's going to be consumed by the line, likewise, is the voltage consumed by, is the, the voltage drop, it is the voltage drop across this element here, the voltage drop across this element here, times the complex conjugate of the current that we just calculated here, okay? As, as we don't know yet this value here, what we can do is to simply do this. What is voltage? Voltage is impedance times current, so it's going to then be the impedance of the line times the current times the complex conjugate of the current. Okay, when we multiply one phasor or one complex number by its complex conjugate, what's left off is only the magnitude of the phasor, so it's going to be zilli times the magnitude of the complex number squared. <coughs> Trust me, with this information here, we can calculate the power that is lost there in that transmission line. So here now, I already calculated here using my calculator, and I found that 72,520 phase 45 degrees volt ampere will be the complex uh, power that's going to be consumed by this load here. 
But what we want, what we want is only the real power, not the complex power. The real power T is going to be equal to 72,520 times the cosine of 45 degrees. And this is going to be in watts. This is going to be in watts. I am going to raise it here for better visualization. And you guys will understand what I will be saying, okay? So, for you people to understand what I'm saying, save this value here because we are going to use it for comparison later, okay? The power lost in transmission with this configuration here is going to be approximately equal to 51 kilowatts. Okay, it's going to be 51. You are going to lose 51 kilowatts here, okay, to supply power to this uh, load here. See that it is half, it is half of this value here. So we are losing a lot of power, okay, that could be useful to provide power to other loads. We are losing a lot of power in transmission lines. Save this value, we are going to use it for comparison. Now, I am going to redraw the system. I am going to redraw the system and I'm gonna use a different configuration here. And you will, you will understand what I mean by a transformer here. So, we are going to have a transformer here, okay? We are going to have a transformer here. The transmission line, okay? And another transformer here. And here, the generator or the power plant. So, this is the voltage of the generator. Here, the, the impedance of the line, okay? What we want is to step up this, step up this voltage here for transmission, okay? And here we want to step it down for consumption, okay? We don't want to consume high power. Or high voltage, okay? We don't want to consume high voltage. It is dangerous, okay? We want to consume a low voltage. All appliances in my house are low voltage because high voltage is dangerous for our houses, all right? So here I'm gonna have a voltage here. I'm gonna have a voltage here. I'm gonna have a voltage here. I'm gonna have a voltage. I'm gonna call it V. Um, First transformer, uh, first transformer primary here, first transformer secondary here, second transformer primary here, second transformer secondary. Okay, are you guys understanding? Are you guys following what I'm doing there? The first thing that we need to do is to understand the current we want to use this current here i line we want to use this current here that's going to flow through the transmission line to calculate the power losses okay but to calculate this current here i'm gonna have to refer this load to the generator and how do we refer loads we refer loads like this for example um, my z load prime that my z load prime which is going to be this load referred to this side is going to be a squared times z load all right if you guys studied it in college or in your technician course, you are going to understand what we're doing here, okay? So, I already calculated these parameters here, and I know that this load here, referred to this side, becomes, becomes, okay, so, first of all, uh, it's gonna be 100 squared, because 
the turns ratio of this transformer here is 100, the same this transformer here 100, then the turns ratio squared is going to be uh, 100 squared, and if you calculate the here voltage divided by current, you are going to do the math, you are going to discover that the impedance here is 2.12 phase 23.07 degrees ohms okay so this is the the impedance here the impedance of this uh, load here seen by the system okay the system sees this impedance here and then the impedance uh, referred to, to this side, okay, to this impedance here is at the secondary of this transformer. I want to refer it to the primary of this transformer, and then it's going to become 21,200 phase 23.07 degrees ohms, okay. So, now that I referred to this uh, impedance to the primary of the second transformer, I have to combine this impedance with this, the impedance of the load. And then I am going to use complex numbers algebra and combine this with this and I get that Z line plus Z low prime, okay, I use prime because it's referred to the primary of this uh, transformer, and I calculated it already to be 21,201.31 phase, uh, 23.07 degrees ohms, okay, okay, now that we have the impedance to refer to this side, what we need to do is to refer this impedance to the generating side, to the primary of the first transformer, okay? I am going to erase it here. If you want to just stop the video for better visualization of what I'm doing, okay? All right, I don't want to lose the time calculating. I already calculated the numbers. And then the impedance, all these impedance referred to the generating side is Z uh, Li plus Z Lo prime. And then I'm going to put a prime again because the first prime is to refer to this and the second prime is to refer the combination to this side here and it becomes 2.12 phase 23.07 degrees ohms okay oh, oh, I want you guys please to check these values okay I I already checked this, but I trust you guys and tell me what you think about it all. All right, and then, and then I am going to assume, I'm going to assume that, um, I'm going to assume that the current that flows here, IG, IG, the current that flows here is the same is the same of the current that flows here, all right? Because think a minute, here is 1 to 100 and here is 100 to 1. Then you are going to refer this current here to this side and then when you refer it again, it becomes equal to the original, all right? Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm going to assume that IG is equal to I low. And when we do that, we understand that IG, IG is equal to the, the current that we calculated here in the first example where, that we did before using the transformer and then it is 
0.45 in the phase, negative 23.07 degrees amperes. Okay, okay, my friend. Okay, my friends, these are, this is the current that will flow here, that will leave the generator. This is the current that be, will be outputted by the generator. And now, to calculate the power lost here, we just need to refer this current from this side to this side here. And it is easy to refer currents, okay? What we need to do is to... Divide it by 100. Divide it by 100. So we are going to divide this, okay? Because the turns ratio here is 1 to 100. When we multiply the voltage by 100, the current gets to be decreased by 100. This is the purpose of transformers. We step up voltage because we want to step down currents. All right, so the current that will flow through the power line to the transmission line is going to be 2.26 in the phase negative 23.07 degrees amperes. All right, my friends, and we are going to do the math again. We are going to calculate the complex power. Um, the complex power consumed by the transmission line and we are going to calculate the power, the real power consumed by the transmission line which is equal to the, the apparent power which is the magnitude of the complex power and we are going to multiply it by the cosine the cosine of the angle of the load. The angle of the load is 45 degrees. When we do that, when we do that, we find we find a value. We find a value that is close to that is close to P lost is close to five watts. Okay, my friends. This is the power that's going to be lost here. And if you guys remember, first we had calculated that the power lost without the transformer was 51 kilowatts. Can you see? Can you see how, how much this guy is bigger than this guy? Okay, so this is with, with the transformer and this is without without the transformer can you see that here we lost a very tiny a very tiny amount of power and here we lost a lot of power okay so this is the objective of using transformers we use transformers to diminish. This guy here is 10,000 times greater than this guy, okay? This guy is 10,000 times greater than this guy. So this is why we use transformers in power systems, to diminish the power that is lost in cables, okay? Otherwise, the majority of the power that is generated would be lost in cables, and this is exactly what we don't want. My friends, this was the video that I wanted to make. I hope you guys learned something from it and enjoyed it. If you want to contact me, if you want to have conversations with me, if you want to do business with me, I'm going to leave my number in the description of the video and you can contact me at will. You are free to do that. My friends, thank you for watching. Goodbye.